month, what I've done, I've got a piece of, actually an old piece of beam uh, from a, I, I believe, a, a, an old van. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve a three-dimensional um, fairground horse um, in a in a frame. So I'm going to ca actually carve the, the three-dimensional horse and the frame together um, out of this beautiful old piece of wood. But first what I need to do is face off, because it's rough wood, I'm going to face off the, the top and the bottom and then we put it back onto this board to uh, hold it onto the bed and then uh, zero the, the machine to the, the piece of work and then I'm going to cut it in four different stages so um, five different stages including this uh, fa facing off cut so um, we're going to start it on with that right now surface the other side and uh, I now have a zero, new zero point or reference point here that this program now the 3D cutting program starts now at this front um, left hand corner um, and the reason I leave such a lot of or a great amount of material here is because each time I change a tool if it didn't have this material here I wouldn't have anywhere to reference where the uh, Z0 uh, was for the particular tool that's in the, uh, in the chuck. So that's why I leave a fair bit of material here so I can reference the, the Z or Z uh, axis 0 uh, for whatever tool is in here. So okay we'll start the program running now.
six mil bull nose in. Uh, but now I need to lower the motor down in its fixing. So um, I don't run out of thread on the Z axis. Just support the motor, just ease the clamp a little bit. A bit too far down. That'll be perfect. It's as simple as that. Um, if you buy one of these machines, um, I do recommend getting the um, pendant. It makes life a lot easier because I can now control the machine uh, with the pendant. Uh, now what I need to do is to re-zero the Z axis. The X, Y has not altered, so that's fine. That can be left as it is. So, uh, And I normally do it with just a bit of paper, uh, just on a area where I can. Just about it. So then to zero it, you just and it's done.
there so now you can see it resembles um, one of the uh, horses in a, a fairground ride um, but of course this is the second roughing cut uh, now we're going to put the uh, three millimeter ball nose tool in and um, it'll fetch this up with a greater detail and clarity Now that's the result of the finishing cut with a 3mm ball nose. Um, it's quite detailed and I think I'm going to leave it at that. I just need to finish off a little bit of the furry bits by hand. Uh, but I do have a problem however and it's this knot here. As uh, it's machined down through I've uh, it's sort of machined into a, a rotten area. This is actually rotten and, and loose. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going. I'm not sure I'm going to even try and repair this area. Uh, so I think what I'm going to do is cut this section out uh, back to this um, ledge here. Um, I'm not really sure yet. I, I'm going to have to take it off and have a detailed look at it, see what I can get away with, but. Uh, as I'm sure you can uh, you can see there that uh, it's quite a quite a good reproduction of um, a fairground horse uh, within a frame. So um, well, I'll I'll take this off and examine it and see how I can finish it. And here we have the finished item, um, and I did have to trim back. Um, the sides uh, one step uh, uh, down from where I'd uh, originally machined it but um, I think you'll agree that it's made rather a pleasing end product and I think any child would uh, appreciate it hanging on the, the bedroom wall. Um, I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's episode and um, Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.